episode of our All About series. And today we're going to be learning about a woman called Esther. Let's get into it. There was a king called King Ahasuerus. Try saying that 10 times fast, it's very hard. He was alive 480 years before our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ was born on this earth. And he ruled over 127 provinces, basically from India all the way to Ethiopia. The throne of his kingdom was in a place called Shushan, which is in modern day Iran. Three years into his reign, he decided to have a Mahusha feast for all of his officials and servants and all of the powerful people of Persia and Medea were also there. The feast was to last 180 days. And once that feast was all over, he decided to have another feast for all of the people in his palace. And his queen, Queen Vashti, she held a feast for all of the women who were gathered there. After a week of partying, <laughs> King Ahasuerus commanded some of his eunuchs to bring Queen Vashti to him so that he could show her off because she was so beautiful, much like me. <coughs> but she said no, 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 it's a no. I'm no coming. <gasps> oh dear. The king was raging. <laughs> so he asked all of his closest advisors, what should he do next? They said, not only has she wronged the king, but every prince and male in the province. Queen Vashti's behavior became known to all and caused a lot of arguments between husbands and wives everywhere. The solution was to get rid of her. So Queen Vashti was out. And so the search for a new queen in Shushan had begun. So all of the beautiful young women came before the king so that he could pick for himself a new queen. Now there was a certain man called Mordecai and he was a Jew. His family had been taken captive by the Babylonians under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. So they were taken from Israel to Babylon. Now Mordecai had a young cousin. Can you guess what her name was, boys and girls? That's right, you guessed it, it's Esther. Now Esther was an orphan as her parents had died when she was young. So Mordecai took her in and raised her as his own daughter. Esther was so beautiful, again, much like me. Nope. When they had heard that the king was looking for a new queen amongst the beautiful young women of Shushan, Mordecai said to Esther that she should go to the palace. Esther was so beautiful that as soon as King Ahas... Ah 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 that guy... <laughs> Esther was so beautiful that as soon as King Ahas... Ah <laughs> that as soon as King Ahas... Ah 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 Esther was so beautiful that as soon as King Ahasuerus <laughs> laid eyes on her, he knew she was the one. Esther pleased the king and received great favour in the king's eyes and she was moved into the palace at once, being crowned Queen Esther. However, she didn't tell the king that she was also a Jew. Chapter 2 verse 21 of the book of Esther says, in those days, as Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the threshold, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Mordecai heard this and took word it to his cousin, Queen Esther, who then went and told the king. He then investigated it and found out the men to be guilty, so they were both arrested and hung on the gallows. Ooh, bad day for them. This event was recorded in the Book of Chronicles in the presence of the king, which is going to be very important for later. Not long after this, the king promoted a man called Haman. A man called Haman? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyway, he was in charge of all of the king's affairs and was above every prince and servant in the king's provinces. Mordecai refused to recognise or show respect to this man, Haman, and he would not bow down to him. 
which made Haman mad. <laughs> so Haman was a madman. Haman grew to really dislike Mordecai and all of his people, the Jews. In fact, Haman watched the Jews closely and told the king that they were a disobedient people who would not follow the king's laws. And he would offer a great sum of money to see them all put to death for their rebellion. After a time, Mordecai came to hear of Haman's evil plan to kill all the Jews and he was just devastated. Mordecai tore his clothes and covered himself with dust and ashes and he mourned for his people and prayed to God for mercy. All over the king's providences, the Jews fasted and prayed, crying out in desperation to God for help. Esther was distressed at the sight of Mordecai and wanted to help him, so she got new clothes for him and sent them to him, but he refused to take them and continued to pray and seek God for help. Esther then decided to send one of her servants, and I think I'm probably going to mess his name up, but I believe his name is Hathach. I think I got it right. Anyway, she sends him to Mordecai to see what it was that was truly troubling him. Mordecai told Hathach Haman's plan to kill every Jew and the money that he promised if it was done. Mordecai also presented a copy of the written decree for the destruction of the Jews, which he told Hathach to give to Queen Esther. In chapter 4 verse 11, Esther speaks to her servant saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come into the king these thirty days. Mordecai replied to our message in verse 13. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your fellow's house will perish. And who knows Well, you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Queen Esther declared a fast amongst all the Jews and came up with a plan. A couple of days later, Queen Esther then put on her royal robes and entered into the inner courts of the king. <gasps> Is she going to be put to death? I don't know! Whew. To her relief, the king held out his golden scepter and she touched it. The king then asked, What is it that you want, Queen Esther? Esther asked the king and Haman if they would attend a feast that she had prepared for them. So the king quickly gathered Haman and they went to Esther's feast. Again the king asked, Queen Esther, what is it that you want? You may have up to half of my kingdom. Once more, Queen Esther invited them to another feast on the following day, saying, Tomorrow I will let you know what it is I desire. Haman left a happy man, thinking all of his plans were coming to pass and to think that he had a special invitation to dine with the king and queen. Ooh, doesn't he think he's prim and proper? <sighs> that night, Haman had a party with all of his friends and his wife. He boasted of all of his riches and how he was the only one to dine with the king and the queen the next day. But still, one thing was bothering him, Mordecai. He hated Mordecai. Haman's wife had an idea. She told Haman, build gallows 50 feet high on which you can hang Mordecai at the feast tomorrow. Haman loved the idea and told his servants to have the gallows made ASAP, which is as soon as possible. No, I'm as beautiful as this. <laughs> uh, that same night, King Ahasuerus could not sleep. He got up and decided to read some of the chronicles from his reign. Suddenly, the king came upon the time where Mordecai followed the plot of Bigthan and Teresh who were going to kill the king. The king asked his servants, What has been done for this man Mordecai? Eh, nothing. The servant replied, As the king needed help with this situation, he called upon the help of Haman as he was the only person in the court at that time. The king asked Haman, 
What shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honour? Haman, thinking that the king was talking about him, said that the man should be given a royal robe and a horse that had not yet been ridden on by the king and also a crown to be placed upon his head along with a parade throughout the city to honour him. The king said, hurry, do all you have said for Mordecai. All right, Mordecai. Mordecai? Haman was mad man, but swallowing his pride and tail firmly between his legs, Haman went home. His wife said to him, if this man's a Jew, you will not prevail, but fall before him. While they were talking, a servant came and took Haman to the banquet that was prepared by Queen Esther. Once they were all there, the king spoke again to Queen Esther, asking, What is it that you want? You may have up to half of my kingdom. Queen Esther then took her chance. She said, If I have found favour in your eyes, O king, give me my life and that of my people, the Jews. She continued, We have been sold as slaves, both male and female. I would have stayed quiet, but the enemy could never compensate for what the king may lose. The king then asked, who is this enemy of mine? Queen Esther replied, It is Haman, the evil adversary of the king. And so Haman's plan to kill the Jews had been scuppered by Queen Esther, and a little bit of help from Mordecai as well, of course. He was then hanged on his own gallows that he'd built for Mordecai. Talk about irony. And so Israel, the Jews, God's chosen people, had been saved. Woohoo! They'd been saved by a brave man, Mordecai, and a brave queen, Queen Esther. Yay! Guess what time it is? That's right, it's time to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for your love, your truth, grace and mercy, Lord. We thank you for the story of Esther and her cousin as well, how they remained faithful and sought you in their times of trouble and need, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you do, God. We know, Heavenly Father, you are in complete control of everything all the time lord we thank you for that and i pray for every single boy and girl that they continue to learn more and more about you they grow in their love they grow in their faith each and every single day heavenly father we pray for all these things we thank you for all these things in jesus mighty mighty name and everybody says amen well boys and girls that is all we have time for today but remember as always, say it with me, we read God's Word, we listen to God's Word, and we stay strong in God's Word. Good.